As a creative bullet journaling enthusiast, I find that I have months where I'm really excited to set up a layout and go into heaps of detail and spend a lot of time, and months where I really don't want to do that. May of 2024 is a month where I want to be quick and efficient, but I still want my journal to look cute at the end. So let's see what we can do. Hi, I'm Erin. Thank you for planning with me. In case you haven't been following my 2024 journal adventures, I'm using this journal from Mellow Days, which has watercolor paper, and that has inspired me to try to use paint in every single one of my themes this year. It does feel a little like I'm cheating this month because I'm going to be using paint pens with these stamps rather than actually like painting something freehand. And then I remember that I set the rules of my own challenge and so it's not cheating unless I say it's cheating and I'm gonna say that it's not cheating. <laughs> I got these square stamps recently and they each have kind of a tile pattern on them. They actually really remind me of sort of Portuguese tile work. Bear in mind when I say that I actually don't know very much at all about Portuguese tile work, but a friend went on holidays there recently and I loved their photos. So my original plan was actually to use these stamps with some calligraphy inks. I don't love stamp pads. I don't find that stamp ink pads work very well for me. So I usually use pens with my stamps in case you haven't seen me do that a hundred times before. It's something I do very often. These particular acrylic paint markers are from Artistro and they have this beautiful big brush tip which makes it so much easier to colour in the surface of the stamp. They came in a set of 16 and I absolutely love these paint markers, I've used them a lot and I have a discount code which is Erin, so if you want to get 10% off at Artistro you can use my code. I actually just picked three colours and three stamps even though the stamp set came with six. I picked three that I thought looked nice together and I'm actually using the same colour for each stamp every time. So this kind of teal green blue colour I'm using on this particular stamp with the curly things, the one that's got the feathery things I'm using with the blue marker and the one that has the circular kind of motifs I'm using with the yellow. And I'm just trying to make sure I never stamp the same stamp next to itself so that there's always a bit of variety so we'll always have different colours next to each other and different shapes next to each other too. Next week's video on the channel is actually going to be a deep dive into how I came up with this theme, how I plan my themes generally for my bullet journal, a bit of a step by step into the behind the scenes process. So if you want to make sure that you see that, hit subscribe if you haven't already. I will walk you through the whole process. I'm also using stamps for some of the lettering in this setup, not all of it, but a fair bit. I'm teaming up my letter stamps, which I use constantly all the time. Links in the description, by the way, to everything I'm using in this video in case you want to get your hands on anything for yourself. I'm teaming up those stamps with the same paint markers that I've used for the stamps of the tiles so that everything's looking really cohesive. And I may have been spending too much time on social media because this is definitely a very summery vibe and we are going into autumn and winter here in Australia right now. So it is not at all my season, but I guess I'm being influenced by the summery vibes that I'm seeing online. Since this is such a colourful setup, I wanted to choose a quote to match that felt very appropriate to a theme about colour. So this is the one I've gone with. Colour is a power which directly influences the soul by Wassily Kandinsky. I hope I'm pronouncing you correctly, Wassily. I think that's true. I think colour really has a big effect on some of us and I am definitely one of those people. So I like that quote. I like it a lot. Something else that I really like is the fact that the design on these stamps is exactly five dot grid spaces wide, which means it's two and a half centimetres on a five millimetre dot grid, which has made it really easy to stamp everything in a way that everything sits together so that it looks like tiles, it looks like they're supposed to be right up next to each other like that. But I did go in with pencil first and sketch out where everything was going to go so I could kind of visualise and plan ahead. Clearly this pen is not a paint marker, this is a Pentel brush sign pen which are my favourite pens for lettering. I also used it for the quote attribution on the other page. As much as I love those brush tip paint markers, the tip on those brushes is so big that it's really hard to get a very fine line out of them consistently, so for the more intricate stuff I'm switching over to this pen. And it's a very good colour match to the green that I was using previously, so I'm not mad at it. It's a touch darker, but like, it's so subtle, you almost can't tell. I'm doing something here on the cover page that I wouldn't normally recommend, but I think it works. I just wanted a really bold title for May because there's kind of a lot of detail going on in the tiles, there's a lot of small markings there that I think your eye could get a little lost in so I wanted a big bold May title and I've gone with this big chunky serif font and the thing that's unusual about it is that this is the only time I'm going to use it in the setup. I'm not going to use this lettering style again anywhere else and I would usually advise against that because it kind of detracts from the cohesion of your layout. It makes things feel like they flow a little bit less but this is the only place where I wanted a bold title and had the space for it so to heck with the rules this time I'm just doing whatever I want and I think it still works. I owe you a big apology because we are about to skip forward quite far in time. When I was setting this up, I was listening to an audiobook and I was really enjoying it. I was so in the zone, I was in a flow state and I didn't realize when my camera stopped recording and we missed a lot 
actually, of this calendar page, but it's not that different to how I usually set up calendar pages. So maybe it's okay, I'm sorry. I did deliberately make the calendar boxes five by five spaces because I wanted them to match up with the size of the tiles. I thought that would be a nice kind of pleasing to the eye harmony kind of a thing. But besides that detail, I think I normally do four by four boxes. It's otherwise completely the same as how I would normally do a calendar. We've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday on the left page, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday on the right side. Sometimes I switch that up and do it the other way around, but just a place to have events and tasks that have to happen on specific days throughout the month so that I can refer back to them when I'm doing my weeklies and make sure I know what's going on. I do also have this information in a Google Calendar, but I'm the kind of person who benefits from writing things down twice, so I'm not mad at that at all. I also went inside a bit, so I'm just going to cover that up with some white paint marker and carry on to the next spread. That was quick, wasn't it? I'm sorry again. You will get to see me sketch out that calendar in pencil though in next week's video, so again, maybe stick around if you want to see that, if that would be helpful to you. This next page we've moved on to is my goals, favorites, and musings page, which is a mainstay for me. I love having it in my journal, and I'm just adding a solid bar of tiles down the side. I've tried to scatter them out a little bit on other pages, but for this one, I wanted a solid wall down the left and right sides of the page. So we'll do the same thing on the other page as well, which is going to be for tracking habits. And because there were three stamps that I was using here and I was using them in a way where I wanted them to not be next to each other with the same color twice, I actually just put them in sequence. So every time I use the blue stamp, the next one will be the green stamp and then the next one after the green will be the yellow. And that just made sure in this situation where there was going to be a lot of these squares next to each other that I never doubled up. And it was perfect and I love how it looks. I wanted to keep it really simple from here on out, so I'm just dividing the left page into three horizontal sections. The top one is for goals, obviously a place to write down goals for the month of May. The next one is for favorites, so anything that I'm enjoying in the month of May I will write down here, whether that's TV and books and movies, oh, probably not books, they'll go in my reading journal, but movies, food, music, anything at all can go in that section. And then musings down the bottom is just a little snapshot of whatever's on my mind. I didn't feel like they had enough definition, so I'm adding in a black line for each of these to make sure that you can really see where each section is. Some months I use the heck out of this page and some months I barely touch it, so we'll have to wait and see what we get for May. Next, we're onto the habit tracker on the right side. I'm gonna leave enough space to track four habits, although I don't know what they will be yet because we aren't close enough to May for me to determine that just yet. I haven't been including habit trackers in my journal for the past couple of months just because I was in a bit of a journaling slump there and I found that if I did include them, I wasn't using my habit trackers, but I'm ready to bring them back. I'm ready to reintroduce them and we'll just have to see again, like the previous page, how we go. We'll just have to, we'll have to wait and see. I'm doing just my classic habit trackers, which are a tiny calendar, which sometimes it's merciful when you do a tiny calendar like this that you don't do too many of them because your hand can get very tired writing out lots of tiny numbers several times. These ones are great because they're basically the same every time. The top two spaces are for where you write what the habit you want to track is and the initial for each day of the month, the week rather, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so on and so forth. And then the space underneath that is where the numbers go. And you generally only need five of these. I will sometimes wrap around the last couple of days onto the top line if there's a bit of an extra partial week going on so that it doesn't take up an extra row. There are some words that are more comfortable to write in hand lettering calligraphy styles, and I think habits is one of them. Habits is a word that I really enjoy lettering. It just seems to come out well every time. Since I have a little bit of space here, I've decided to try and bounce my letters a little bit because that's something that I'm working on lately, and I think it's cute. I don't think it's very bouncy, but it's a little bouncy. Anyway, I want to add some more color here just to make these habits pop off the page a little bit more. So I'm coloring in the top two boxes of each of the habit tracker spaces so that they've got that little pop of green going on. I'm not sure how easy it will be to see my lettering through this on camera, but in person, when I go over this with a Pigma Micron, it'll be just fine, so no stress. Also, tell me this theme doesn't scream summer holiday to you because it's screaming summer holidays to me. And my city, honestly, if you were to compare our winter temperatures with some like UK summer temperatures, I think you would probably find them comparable. So maybe that's fine. <laughs> I mean, it's supposed to be autumn for us right now and we're still getting 27, 28 degrees Celsius days, which I think is like 80, 82 Fahrenheit. So 
It's just endless summer here, and that is not my favourite, but this is where I live. Onward to the content planner spread, this one I think might be crucial for me in May. I'm feeling really disenfranchised with the whole social media thing at the moment. I seem to go through phases of this. I just don't feel like doing it, which means scheduling is my best friend, and if I need to schedule out content then I need this spread. It helps me, it just helps me sort it out in my brain. I'm really only focusing on YouTube and Instagram here, and it probably sounds a bit weird, like, do you really have to post to social media, Erin? Well, yeah, it's kind of part of my job now, so I guess I do. So the two columns that you're seeing here, well, three columns, but one of them's small. The two larger, wider columns are for Instagram and YouTube, respectively. Other way around, though, I think I'll do YouTube in the left column and Instagram in the right column. And then that tiny little column on the left side is for the initial and the number for each day of the month. So basically, I'll have a space to write something down for every single day of the month as far as a content calendar goes. I will not necessarily be posting something every day of the month, but it helps me to see it all laid out like this so I can space things kind of evenly, you know? I use a third-party app to schedule my content and I find it really helpful. I have a whole video about my content planner, although it was a different layout that I was using at the time that I made it. So if you want to deep dive into this, I'll pop a link to that in the top right hand corner and in the description for you. Since May is a month that has 31 days, the functional spaces on the left page are actually a little bit shorter than the ones on the right page. So if they look a bit wonky or out of proportion, that's why I've got 15 on the left page and then 16 on the right. Yes, I do think this setup will be much more satisfying in a month with 30 days, but I haven't actually tried it in one yet, so watch this space. Now it's time to get stampy and add some decoration. So I very strategically started these calendar spaces, the, the actual content planner section of the page, five boxes down from the top so that I had room to fit one of my tiles kind of above it on the left side there, and that would kick off the decoration. I've also got just enough space to have two tiles next to each other horizontally on either side of the planning space, so that worked out really well. Did I do that on purpose? Yeah, you bet I did. And I'm kind of approaching it like I've got four little vignettes of tiles. I didn't want to connect everything up into one big slab because there's going to be a lot of information on this page later and I feel like that would just look overwhelming. So we're leaving it with a bit of space to breathe. We need to add a heading at the top of the page and then this one is done. Now, I want to address something here. There is going to be a very conspicuous spread missing if you are someone who's been watching my videos for a long time and that is the spending log. I love my spending log, don't worry, I'm not getting rid of it, I'm just moving it out of this journal. Somebody said earlier in the year that they kept a separate journal for financial tracking and planning things, and I just think that's such a good idea. I have a traveler's notebook that I think is perfect for it, so I'm moving my spending log into my traveler's notebook. It also means I no longer have to spend ages blurring out my financial information when I do a flip through video showing you through my fully used journal at the end. So that's a nice thing. We're moving on to a weekly, no spending log, don't worry, it still exists, it's just not in this journal anymore. For my weeklies in April, I was actually just doing two days to a page and having a really big list, and I really liked that, but 
I did feel like I was wasting a little bit of paper. I'm trying to use up some space because I've been doing smaller weeklies. I mean, smaller everything, less pages generally in this journal throughout most of this half of the year. So I have more pages left over. I've been doing some memory keeping too, which has taken up some extra ones, but it does seem like I'm gonna finish this journal to coincide with the end of June, which is great. I thought I would try out this like big long list situation again, but rather than two days to a page on a weekly, I'm trying out three. And I'm only gonna show you the first weekly in this one. We'll set some up together on some live streams when we actually get to May. Just having three days to a page means that I'm going to be breaking up my weeks in a way that I haven't really before. It feels a little uncomfortable. I'm trying it out. Whether or not it sticks around, we'll have to see, but I'm, I'm experimenting a lot this year. I'm, I'm working out what works for me now as opposed to what worked for me in the past that maybe isn't serving me anymore. So it's all an experiment. And I wanted to make sure that there was a bit of variety in the page. So I'm doing my decorations kind of sticking out further on some than others. It's like bouncy, you know, Mondays up, Tuesdays down. And tell me they don't look like Tetris blocks, those, those tile decorations. It's so cute. Let's have a flip through and see the whole thing from start to finish. This is my May theme for 2024. Thank you so much for planning with me. If you want to plan even more in depth, as I mentioned, stick around for next week's video where we're going to go right into how I designed this theme from start to finish. I can't wait to share it with you. If you're less about stamps and paint markers and you want to see more of a collage style setup, have a look at last week's video in the giveaway journal. It's my May theme and it's very vintage and I think you'll like it. And underneath that is a link to last year's May theme, which was all about fairies and super cute. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. Happy planning. See you next time.